So, first of all, I would like, of course, to thank the organizer, Professor Levillard and Professor Sell, for inviting me to be here today to discuss with you the redox insight into the central nervous system degeneration. And in particular, I will discuss with you some of our recent results we obtained by analyzing Down syndrome brain prior and after development of Alzheimer-like dementia. So why Down syndrome? So this is, of course, the most common genetic cause of intellectual disability. But as you may know, Down syndrome individuals by the age of 40s are at increased risk to develop a type of dementia that has the same characteristic of Alzheimer with the position of plaques and tangles and therefore represents a human prodromal model to study the pathogenesis and progression of Alzheimer's disease. Among the putative mechanism of neurodegeneration, we have focused our attention on the increased oxidative stress hypothesis of neurodegeneration. And uh, intriguingly, the causes of increased oxidative stress in Down syndrome may be searched by mapping the chromosome 21, where a number of genes directly, such as amyloid precursor protein and uh, the protein SOD1, or indirectly, such as, for example, the S100 beta, the transcription factor BAC1, or the cystathione beta synthase, may be responsible of causing increasing oxidative stress with the parallel decrease of the antioxidant response. And a number of studies have demonstrated increased oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction in Down syndrome brain already in the fetal brain. And we also show it that oxidative stress markers are increased in the amniotic fluid of women carrying a Down syndrome pregnancies. So I don't have time to show you details of the trisomy-induced oxidative stress hypothesis, but I will show you some of the evidences we collected supporting the disturbance of redox homeostasis in Down syndrome and, of course, the role in the progression of Alzheimer's disease. So among the putative trisomic genes candidate, we focused the attention on the transcription factor BAC1, which is a transcription repressor which bind to the antioxidant response element of DNA, thus inhibiting the transcription of specific genes which are involved in the cell stress response, including emoxygenase 1. So emoxygenase bilivernin reductase system, it's well known for the metabolism of heme, but in neuronal cells, it is important to provide neuroprotection. And therefore, we analyze the functionality of this system in Down syndrome brain because previous studies from our group in collaboration with Professor Butterfield demonstrated the disturbance and the oxidation of this protein in Alzheimer's brain. So we wonder if also something is not functional in the Down syndrome where we have the overexpression of BAC1. And we have analyzed Down syndrome uh, post-mortem brain with and without a deep pathology, of course, uh, with the respective control group, because we analyzed Down syndrome at the mean age of 25 before development of a genial pathology, and the Down syndrome with a deep pathology with their respective age matched controls and the mean age of this group are around 60 years. So as you can see here from these representative blots, we have demonstrated that BAC1 is overexpressed in the Down syndrome with and without a D pathology, and therefore we wonder to see the status of emoxygenase 1. And as you can see here from this graph, we didn't observe any modulation of mRNA level, but only in the presence of a deneuropathology, you can see an upregulation of the system, as well as you can observe this increase in the control old versus control young. And in order to understand this induction, we have also evaluated the polyubiquitination status of BAC1. And as you can see here, with increasing age, we observed an increase of BAC 
poly ubiquitination. That's meaning, possibly, that the neuronal cells are trying to counteract the increasing load of cross, of oxidative stress, by restoring a protective system. So this hypothesis, uh, however, uh, should be also um, explained in light of what we found in Alzheimer's brain, where, as you can see here, we found a huge upregulation of hemoxygenase 1, which is not activated in the same way in the, ID, um, in the DS with ID neuropathology. So in some way, we may suggest that BAC1 overexpression is responsible of reduced hemoxygenase stress response. I don't have time, but we also evaluated the functionality of b vertin reductase A, which is uh, in the same way altered by oxidative modification in this uh, sample. Another interesting finding uh, on the triplicated genes uh, came from studies on SOD1, uh, which we found to be both overexpressed and oxidatively modified. Since in my previous work in Professor Battersfield lab, I have the opportunity to work on a transgenic mouse model of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, where I found that the mutated SOD1 is oxidized, forming aggregates. We also tested if the overexpression and oxidation of SOD1 may also be responsible for formation of aggregates in our sample. And we demonstrate that in the Down syndrome with a deep pathology, we have an increase of aggregates formation. And these results are in line with recent published data demonstrating co-localization of SOD1 into plaques. So these studies, however, need further uh, extension. So in some way, these findings suggest a scenario of an early and chronic oxidative stress condition in Down syndrome individuals, where likely increasing ROS overload are not compensated by an appropriate antioxidant response. And A-beta, if not the only cause, is one of the major ROS inducer, which is responsible of causing oxidative stress and consequent oxidative damage to all macromolecules. In particular, as a biochemist, we focus the attention of oxidative modification of proteins, in particular the irreversible type of modification, such as formation of 3NT, uh, the uh, binding of the lipid peroxidation byproduct, hydroxinoninal, uh, and the formation of protein carbonyls. Since we think that, of course, irreversible modification of protein may affect the function of the protein. And in order to better understand the impact of oxidation of protein into the pathological features of the disease, we apply the redox proteomic approach to study this different type of modification. And I will show you the specific project involving the characterization and identification of HNE modified proteins in this set of samples. Basically, redox proteomic couples to dimensional electrophoresis with immunochemical methods by using specific antibodies that recognize selective oxidative modification. And then by using uh, uh, software, analysis software, you can compare multiple gels and blots at once. And you can give, uh, of course, uh, uh, you can identify the spots that show uh, the, an altered pattern of oxidation, of course, normalize to variation in protein expression level. You can, of course, digest the spots from the gel, send it to mass spectrometry, either Malditoff or uh, Orbitrap technology, and you can get the identification of the protein. So you can identify which protein is more oxidized in the different group of comparison. So in this case, again, we have analyzed this port post-mortem human frontal cortex from Down syndrome with and without a deep pathology, and specifically, we analyzed the HNE modified proteins. So by looking at representative images, uh, we have different four group of comparison. And if you look at the difference between Down syndrome versus control young, we can characterize 
deoxidized protein before the appearance of a neuropathology, thus indicating the dysfunction which is intrinsic to the trisomy. And by comparing the DS with the deneuropathology versus control old, we can confirm the presence of oxidized protein um, that, uh, of course, uh, are similar or not uh, to what we already demonstrated in Alzheimer's brain. So we can find the common oxidized protein between Alzheimer's brain and DS with a deneuropathology. By comparing the Down syndrome AD versus DS, it is possible to identify the specific protein which are possibly involved in the progression of the neuropathology. Of course, taking into consideration the uh, variation uh, of which is only dependent on aging, uh, these are the results coming out from the comparison of control old versus control young. But I want just to underline that in this case, when we are not talking about very early population, the mean age of the old, uh, is 60 years, so I think we are still young people. We found only one protein to be more oxidized, which has been not, of course, considered in the other comparison. So in this table, I have listed all the protein we have identified by mass spectrometry according to the group of comparison. And as you can see, there are some proteins that belong to more than one single group. But among these list of proteins, I would like to point your attention to two major family of proteins to which the majority of this protein belongs, which are the degradative system involving the autophagy machinery and the protosomal system, and of course, for your interest, protein belonging to the energy metabolism and the glucose metabolism and ATP production. So, in order to better understand how oxidation of a protein translates into this function of the function I've showed you, uh, these are the protein involved in the autophagy, and we found that the V0 ATPase and catepsin D are oxidized in the Down syndrome brain. And this fits with the finding from Professor Nixon group demonstrating reduced acidification of lysosome both in Down syndrome and in the D brain, as well as reduced activity of catepsin D. So possibly the oxidation of this protein may be responsible of the findings from Professor Nixon group. We also found that GFAB, GRP78, and HSC71 are oxidatively modified. And there are a lot of evidences demonstrating that uh, chaperones are disturbed and paired in neurodegeneration, not only in Alzheimer's. So the system is also involved. But in order to better understand the disturbance of the autophagy machinery, because growing studies are highlighting that disturbance of the gradative system, both autophagy and protosomal system, are central to neurodegeneration, we investigated the functionality of the PI3K AKT M thoraxis, which is central for the regulation of autophagy, but is also very important in controlling proteinomestasis, both synthesis and degradation. And Again, as you can see from these representative blocks, we found increased phosphorylation of PI3K and AKT in our sample in the DS and DSD compared to the age matched controls. And also we found increased phosphorylation of mTOR and its downstream target, the P70S6 kinase, which results in the decreased ratio of LC3 compared to LC31, which is a common marker of autophagosomal formation. So in some way, we also um, get a more comprehensive view of disturbed autophagy in our samples. But I just want you also to um, highlight that the sustained activation of pietric A AKT axis can lead to inhibition of IRS1 by a feedback, negative feedback mechanism through the activation of mTOR and P70S6 kinase that phosphorylates IRS1 on its inhibitory domain. And we demonstrated increased phosphorylation of IRS1 in the Down syndrome and also in the SID 
versus their A-matched controls. That's a very interesting point in the metabolic pathway because we are investigating if aberrant insulin signaling is involved in neurodegeneration and we are also pharmaceutically targeting these axes in our transgenic mouse model, both of Down syndrome and Alzheimer's. So hopefully I can give you some positive and promising results. But of course we all know that the majority of the oxidized protein are mainly degraded and removed by the protosomal system. And among the members of the protosomal system, we demonstrated that the protein ubiquitin carbosic terminal L1 is oxidized in our sample. And previous studies already demonstrated the dysfunction of this protein in Parkinson's disease and also in the Alzheimer's brain. And the oxidation of this protein is responsible of reduced activity, which in our sample is also parallel by decreased uh, protosomal activities that we found in our samples. So, taken together, the picture emerging from the dysfunction of the protosomal system also give us uh, an additional input uh, to understand the ubiquitin profile in the Down syndrome brain because, of course, decreased protosomal degradation could be responsible of accumulation of polyubiquitinated proteins, which are not only involved in the uh, protosomal degradation. Very recent evidences also suggest that polyubiquitination is central also for the autophagy, auto, autophagic system. And these are very recent unpublished data uh, where we analyze the uh, ubiquitin, polyubiquitin profile of our Down syndrome samples uh, with and without the pathology. And by affinity purifying polyubiquitinated proteins and applying proteomics uh, to this uh, map, we were able to identify the proteins showing increasing polyubiquitination. So oxidative stress is the increased ROS production parallel with decreased antioxidant response, but is also accumulation of oxidized protein and decreased functionality of the gradually system. So this is a sort of same concept. And what we found uh, with this recent study, it's very interesting, I may say, because around 75% of the protein I have listed in the first table is also polyubiquitinated. So in some way, demonstrating that the cell trying to target the protein to degradation because polyubiquitination occur on the oxidized protein. But we have to highlight that the protosomal system is not functioned properly, at least not completely loss of function, but reduced activity, which is responsible of accumulation of polyubiquitinated proteins, which also suggests, in light of some very recent uh, papers I read, that some other type of aggregates, uh, in addition to plaques and tangles, may be involved. And we also know that ubiquitin positive staining is present, of course, in the neurofibrillary tangles. So the other important evidences, which I think may fit with the, the previous uh, um, <coughs> talk uh, in the morning, is also what we found in terms of impairment of energy metabolism. Because among the protein we identify to be oxidized, there are always enzymes involved in glucose metabolism. As you can see here in blue, these are the enzymes that we found to be oxidized. And I have also to see the limit of my system because of course making this kind of statistical comparison probably does not allow to identify also some other members of this pathway which come not out simply from statistics, of course, due to the diversity and uh, the fact that we are analyzing uh, human samples. So uh, the results can be further implemented by additional studies. So in some way, the picture that emerges is the fact that we may think that 
the oxidation of these enzymes leads to reduce glucose metabolism, which of course is responsible of reduced concentration of ATP, which is essential for neuronal function. It's not for metabolism, it's for synapses and uh, all signaling uh, within neurons. So this is the concluding picture I would like to share with you which put together studies on Alzheimer's brain and on Down syndrome brain, where you can find all the protein we found to be oxidized in common in the different set of samples, which, as I said, are members of the protosomal system and the autophagic machinery together with metabolic enzymes. But of course, you know well that these are not separate events since ATP is fundamental for the functionality of the gradative system, which more or less rely on efficient ATP, on uh, adequate ATP concentration for their proper activity. So the message that I want to share with you is the fact that from Down syndrome, in some way, we study a model of early and chronic oxidative stress. And the oxidative damage accumulate over the lifespan in Down syndrome, which is a model of neurodegeneration it is a model of accelerated aging, and it is a model of intrinsic oxidative stress. So that's the reason why I decided to show you these specific results. And what is also nice to highlight is the fact that we think about a vicious cycle, because we have increased oxidative stress, but the oxidative damage target the system for removal of oxidized protein. So in some way, this vicious cycle, which of course impairs the, the gradative system, is responsible of exacerbating the accumulation of oxidative damage. And we suggest that disturbance of protein degraded system and energy metabolism are central mechanism of neurodegeneration in Down syndrome and AD. But I may extend this finding also to all different types of neurodegenerative disease being very common deregulated pathway. And in all these processes, oxidative stress may be considered the leitmotif of our studies. So I would like to thank all the people in my lab at La Sapienza University and of course the wonderful collaboration we have for, with the University of Kentucky with Professor Butterfield and Professor Ed, which are both experts in Alzheimer's disease and Down syndrome, and the very recent collaboration with Professor S. Aronica of University of Amsterdam, which in a separate and independent studies recently demonstrated the hyperactivation of mTOR pathway in the Down syndrome brain. So that's a sort of input for uh, collaborating also with our group. And of course, thank to all of you for your attention, and I'm open to any question and discussion.